All right, so what's up, everybody? It's boy Kenny. Now today, 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 man, we have a special video. We got the 2024 Game Award uh, nominees, man. I'm super excited. We got the Game Awards next month on the 12th. Uh, I believe it's on a Thursday as well. So pretty excited about that, man. Now I did already vote for, like, obviously I'm gonna show you guys all my votes and stuff like that. I was actually gonna like, you know, just record a video of me like actually just live like voting or whatever. But I'm gonna be honest with you, bro, bro. The website was laggy. Obviously, bro, I think you had like hundreds of thousands of people literally voting at the same time. So like the website was going slow for me and stuff like that. Um, but best believe, I don't know if that was my PC or it was like, you know, um, a lot of people going to the website at the same time or whatever uh, as I was recording. But listen, we're right here. I decided to just screenshot all of my choices or whatever. And then um, I'm going to just, you know, uh, just show you guys like all of, the, um, all of my choices. So here we go, man. First category, we got the best esports team. Um, the, here were like the uh nominees. We had Billy Billy Gaming, uh, Gen G, uh, Navi T1, and then we had Team Liquid. I do know who T1 is, so I was like, you know what? Well, since I know who these guys are, I'm just giving my vote to them. I don't really watch like you know esports like that anyway, but I was like, you know, it is what it is. Next category, we got best esports athlete. Um, now we got 33, uh, Avic KSIB Chovy. I know who Faker is, uh, Zywoo, and then we got ZMJJKK. That sounds like a whole Wi-Fi password. But um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for Faker. I know who he is. Um, bro, they call that man a Tom Brady of, like, eSports. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give my vote to him. I, I, listen, I know who he is. Shout out to everybody else, though, you know? Next category, we got best eSports game. Um, now we got Counter Strike 2, Dota 2, um, yeah, Dota 2, League of Legends, uh, Mobile Legends, uh, Bang Bang, and then we got Valorant. I decided to give my uh, my choice to League of Legends, and the reason is because like whenever you think of like uh, like esports, like for me, whenever I think of esports, the first game that comes to my head, bro, is is, is uh, League of Legends. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give my choice to League of Legends. We got Content Creator of the Year. Uh, we had Queso, you had uh, e e Elowan, shout out to you. We got Techno Gamers, we got Typical Gamer, man, bro. I've been watching Typical Gamer, bro, mm, bro, for like what? Realistically, like seven plus years. Uh, I haven't been, you know, really watching them like nowadays because, you know, I'm a content creator myself, you know, so uh, it, it's kind of hard watching other content creators whenever you're a content creator because, you know, you're out making content. So, um, other than that, man, shout out to Typical Gamer. And then we got uh, Usada. Uh, Pecora, shout out to her. Uh, well, you know, shout out to the VTuber and stuff like that. Uh, but I was like, you know what, man, I got to, I got to give it to Queso, man. Every game that he touched, he's absolutely hilarious. Uh, so I got, I got to give it to Queso. I got to give it to Queso. All right. Most anticipated game, man. Listen, there is no man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I don't even have to. Do I really have to explain myself? We have literally the most anticipated game of all time. This this game has, bro, this game has more buzz than your electrical toothbrush in your bathroom, bro. We got Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Nice. I'm going to be honest with you. I am waiting for this game. I will admit that. This game is hard. This game is nice. Uh, we got Ghost of Tsushima 2 or Ghost of Yote. Amazing. Great. But I'm going to be honest with you. We got God, bro. I'm going to say God of War, bro. And my cuckoo for boo buffs. We got Grand Theft Auto 6. I'm going to be honest with you. That was first pick. As soon as I saw Grand Theft Auto 6, like the cover, picked it instantly. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, obviously for the Nintendo Switch. Absolutely amazing. Monster Hunter Wilds, I'm actually waiting for that game as well. Uh, but I was like, come on, bro. You you know, come on, man. Come on, bro. bro I'm expecting a full sweep. I'm going to be honest with you. Obviously, we all know uh, the Nintendo fans, they're going to ride out for Metroid Prime. But come on, bro. Let's keep it real, bro. Man, this game right here, woo! Of course, I have to go for GTA 6, man. Of course. Best ad uh, adap adaptation basically is like um, like a show or movie that um, that came from like a video game. So we got Arcane. Uh, this is on Netflix, I think. Fallout, I believe. Uh, this is on. Oh, it says it down here. Uh, Amazon. Yep. Yeah. And we got Nut, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason I picked Nut is because, bro, like. Brother, the like the Sonic movie and stuff like that, and then you got like Knuckles and stuff like that. I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't watched this yet, but this does look hard. I I was about to vote for Fallout, but I was like, you know what, bro, that Knuckles, like I think I think this is a show or a movie. I I literally forgot, but I was like, bro, I gotta watch, bro, bro, I gotta watch the Sonic movie that came out. 
I think it came out like last year. I gotta watch that, bro. Uh, but I, you know, I, I went for Knuckles. Uh, like a Dragon Yakuza, I actually didn't know this was a thing. And then Tomb Raider, um, I, I didn't know that was a thing either. So I'm, I'm just being honest. Best multiplayer Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Hell Divers 2, Super Mario uh, Party, uh, Jabbery, Tekken 8, and then Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Now, in my personal opinion, this is best multiplayer game. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is multiplayer this year. It's very fun. It's addicting. It's sweaty. It's cheesy. Um, this is, is going to make you like a little agitated. Yeah, but at the same time, um, this is the first time ever where I feel really happy and I feel really like, you know, um, excited to play a Call of Duty multiplayer over and over and over again. I'm just keeping it real. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 multiplayer is really good. Helldivers 2 multiplayer, cool. Um, you would think that like a Mario game would kind of win. Like, I, I think like a Mario game will most likely win like the family genre of this. But I was like, you know what? Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, like, bro, the, like, it's just, bro, the multiplayer is too fire. And then Warhammer multiplayer is all right, but I don't think it's up there with Call of Duty Black Ops 6, um, you know, multiplayer. So that's why I went for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Um, best sports slash racing. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really play, you know, that many sports games this year. Just keeping it real. Um, we got F1 uh, 24, EA uh, Sports FC 25, NBA 2K 25, uh, Top Spin 2K 25, WWE 2K 24. Um, this is going to be completely honest with you. you guys know how real I am. Um, did not enjoy this. Did not enjoy this. This, I think I downloaded like, the demo for this. This is all right. Um, this is all right as well. I just went with F1. I think F1 is like visually, like visually, like the best looking game on here. Um, and I think it's more fun. I, I don't know. I think it's just more like adaptive. I don't know. Maybe it's just more fun for me. Um, let's go on to the next one. Best family game. Now we all know Nintendo will always take this spot because it's like a family game. You know, everybody loves to play like a Mario. So it's like a Mario party game. Everybody loves, you know, a Mario game as, like, a family. You know, we've all played a Mario game as a family. Um, and, and so that's, like, you know, whatever. I think my second choice would have been Astro Ball. Astro Ball was actually um, a, a pretty good game that showed up in, like, a lot of, uh, of the uh, later categories, stuff like that. So we're actually going to talk about Astro Ball in a bit. But um, I think my second choice would have been Astro Ball. But, bro, um, obviously, bro, Super Mario. Super Mario Party as well. Yeah, come on, bro. Come on, you had The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, uh, The Plucky Squire, or uh, Squire, Squ 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 wait, can I not read? I, I, I promise you, I, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I voted for Super Mario Party. Um, yeah. Best fighting game. Man, man, man. Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, never played this before. Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting co uh, Collection. Um, this is actually pretty nice, but I was like, you know what, man, there's a game on here that I got to vote before that I vote on top of everything else. We got multiverses, Tekken 8. These games are really good, uh, good as well. But bro, we all know I got to go for Dragon Ball Sparkling. All right. We got best RPG. Uh, we got, let's see, Dragon, uh, <laughs> Dragon Domus 2. We got Elden Ring Shadow of the Ear Tree. That was, uh, Elden Ring DLC, if you guys didn't know. We got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. And we got uh, Metaphor, uh, Rafantasio. Rafantasio. Can I not read? I think I can read a little bit. But best RPG, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I got, listen, I had to go for Elder Ring, man. Shout out of the Old Tree, uh, of the Earth er er Tree. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll be saying that wrong a little bit, but we're just going to slide past it. Um, I think it was definitely between Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and uh, Elder Ring DLC. Um, but in my firm opinion, I think that Elden Ring DLC definitely takes this, in, in my opinion. Best action slash adventure. Um, and so we got Astro Bot, we got Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, we got Silent Hill 2, we got Star Wars Out uh Star Wars Outlaws, and then we got The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. I can't lie to you, man. I really enjoyed Silent Hill this year, man. Uh, obviously the game was a remake, but at the same time, man, it was absolutely fire, man. I had to go Silent Hill. Uh, too, man. And listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say about Silent Hill and the later uh, nominees. So we're gonna get to Silent Hill in a little bit. Best action game. We got Black Myth Wukong, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Hell Divers 2, Stellar Blade, Warhammer 40k, Space Marine 2. This was hard. 
this was hard. Now, I can't lie to you. If there was like a hard choice for me, whatever, what I do is I do like process of elimination. So what I did was for this one, I was like, all right, cool. I'm keeping this, crossing this out, crossing this out. I'm keeping this and I'm keeping this. And then I was like, all right, cool. And what helps me is like actually like what helps me fully decide like what I'm going to pick is I read the description of uh, um, of the category. So it says for the best game and action drama focused primarily on combat. And I can't lie to you, then I slashed out Space Marine 2 because the combat was nice Space Marine 2, but it was not on par with Stellar Blade and uh, Black Myth Wukong. My bad, y'all. But it was not on par with uh, Black, Myth Wukong, Black Myth Wukong and uh, Stellar Blade. And man, these two, these two games, man, went neck and neck for me, man. But I was like, you know what, man? If I had to pick one, my gut's telling me Black Myth Wukong. Um, but I would be not out. Listen, I would not be surprised if some of you guys went for Stellar Blade because that was a good game as well. Best VR slash uh, AR. We got Arizona Sunshine remake. Uh, I didn't know this game. Asgard's Wrath 2. Didn't know this game. Uh, Batman uh, Arkham Shadow. I knew this game. Uh, Metal um, Hellsinger VR. I think I reacted to a trailer of this. And then Metro Awakening. Um, if I'm being completely honest with you. This was like the only really game that I that I knew, so this is why I went with it. And bro, it's Batman, bro. What? Come on, bro. It's a Batman Arkham series. I gotta do. I I gotta go for it. Why not? Best mobile games. I don't really play mobile games anymore. I used to like four years ago. Um, but we got AFK Journey. We got Balatro. We got Pokemon Trading Card and Game Pocket. We got Wuthering Waves, and we got Zenless Zone Zero. I um this is like, this is like the only game that I really heard of, so this is why I went for it. Um, but again, I haven't played a mobile game since water was made. So um, let's go to another one. We got best debut indie game. Um, we got Animal Well, Bellatro, Manor, Lords. We got Pacific Drive, and we got the Plucky Squi uh, Squ Squire. Is it is it Squire? Bro, I I think I can read. I think it's this is. I, I think this is a uh, Squire. Um, out of all these indie games, this is the one that I've only knew. Uh, so this is why I went forth um, Pacific Drive. So goes another one. Best community support. We got uh, Boulder's Gate. Great. We got uh, Final Fantasy 16. Great. We got Fortnite. Great. Helldivers 2. Great. And then we got No Man's Sky. Now, this was actually was kind of hard because if you actually think about it, bro, these three have a very strict and like not strict but have, they have a really strong and like they have a, like they have like a really strong foundation uh to their community to the fan base um and then i was like all right cool let's just get rid of these two right i got rid of hell divers and no man's sky i was like all right cool best community support recognizing a game for outstanding community support transparency and responsiveness uh inclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches now we all know the love for final fantasy for for the game franchise uh, of Final Fantasy, it's bro, it's unmatched, bro, it's unmatched. So I knew, all right, I was like, all right, you know what? The only game that can go up there number wise with Final Fantasy is these two right here, Baldur's Gate and Fortnite. But I knew for Baldur's Gate, I was like, you know, like the fan base is strong, but it's not as strong as Final Fantasy. It's not. Um, and then I and then I narrowed it down to these two, to Fortnite and Final Fantasy. And one thing that was the decider for me was for Fortnite, you don't really see a lot of people, especially on social media. You do see people criticizing the game, saying what they like about the game, what they don't like, etc. But at the same time, um, it's mainly like content creators that do that. Um, and, and before you guys say, oh, well, you know, content creators, they do that for, uh, for every single other game. And, and listen, I'm not saying uh, content creators can't voice their opinion. I'm not saying that at all. Because I voice my opinion right now. But at the same time, what I'm saying is, whenever it comes to Fortnite and, and what they need, when, what needs to be added and, you know, uh, what needs to be taken out, whatever, you usually see, like, like a lot of content creators, you know, saying, hey, um, I don't like this being in the game. I want this to be in the game, da 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 And usually the content creators would get, you know, they would get uh, more information from their own community of, like, oh, guys, what should I, you know, what should I tweet out, um, you know, on, on, on Twitter or, sorry, on, on X um about you know what fortnite needs or whatever da, 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 da. like some content creators actually have full like they have full-on meetings with their like with their um 
like with their uh like with their followers and stuff like that you know just for the game you know obviously you know fortnite uh streamers fortnite content creators i'm sorry fortnite youtubers whatever they usually like you know would legit sit down and like be like yo guys what do you want in the game what do you don't want in the game whatever uh because they have like a big phone whatever because i'm not saying and here's the thing i'm not saying epic games you know specifically listens to these content creators whatever but at the same time whenever you see whenever you you know you don't like something like about the game or whatever usually a content creator will already speak about it you know on x or instagram whatever uh but bro when it comes to community support when it comes to like the overall community bro i've never and bro besides rockstar or besides i don't know um what's another strong community um besides like any nintendo game <laughs> Bro, Final Fantasy, bro, is that a fruit fly, bro? Bro, get out of here, bro. There's like, there's no grapes down here, bro. Final Fantasy has the strongest like base, like fan base of all time. I'm beyond not of all time, but it's up there though. That it's up there. Like besides any, besides like any of like the top uh titles of like Nintendo, because we all know, bro, Nintendo, bro, they will crash out for their games. I'm being honest with you. Um, but I, I, I definitely think Final Fantasy takes the cake and like the best community support. That's just my opinion, man. You guys can disagree, whatever. It's fine if you disagree. I'm not gonna, you know, crash out if you guys disagree with me, whatever, you know. Best ongoing game order to a game for outstanding development or ongoing content that involves the player experience over time. Destiny 2, Diablo 4, Final Fantasy 16, Fortnite, and Hell Divers. This was easy for me, actually. You would think that this was actually hard because since we got Destiny and Diablo, whatever, Fortnite. Um, I think Fortnite has proved time and time again that they cannot run out of uh, ideas. They've been improving this game since 2016, uh, 2017, whenever it first came out. 2018, it was big. 2019, they made it even bigger. 2020, they made it even more bigger. And they just keep at, they kept adding in more updates. They kept um, coming up with these different live events and these different concerts and stuff like that. I've never seen no game ever do that. I've never seen a game shut down the internet over and over and over and over and over and over again never um fortnite can do that every time you know bro they they invite some some classic um musicians to you know uh, uh like make like uh concerts and stuff like that bro uh with the ari uh with the marshmallow event um what else the ariana grande event bro the travis scott event in my opinion is like the best concert they ever had in fortnite um and, and bro and many many more bro whenever it comes down to just bringing it bringing an experience bro to your audience over and over again bro fortnite t bro takes the cake but that's just in my opinion you know um diablo is pretty good as well um final fantasy again is a strong community whatever but i don't think it's on the same pace as fortnite whenever it comes to bringing the player uh an experience like at a fast rate fortnite can do that only they can do that. And the reason I think they can do that is because it's a battle royale game and you need to keep updating. You need to keep adding new things. You need to keep taking some stuff out, adding new things and making new maps and uh, and making new live events and doing all that. Bro, you need to do that. You need to do that. And Fortnite can only do that. Uh, you know, Call of Duty, they tried with the whole live event thing. That didn't work out. I mean, and I'm not roasting Call of Duty for that. They tried to, you know, take some things for Fortnite because obviously Fortnite's the number one battle royale of literally all time but at the same time bro like if i'm just being real bro nobody no other game can produce fire at a fast rate than fortnite that's that's the only game that i've seen in my history ever legit i know i'm glazing right now but i'll glaze some more fortnite is the only game in my life that i've ever seen produce fire like fire content like in the game at a fast rate bro they're bro they're they're jumping out an update every month like you can't do that with a lot of games you just you simply can't do that um all right we got games for impact we got um closer to distance indica uh neba we got uh life of strange double exposure we got uh Senua saga hellblaze 2 and they got tales of kurzia and was zue let me get some let me see what all right this was actually kind of hard for me to choose because i was like you know what i i don't know what this means i read it i was like for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning and message i can't lie to you i was a little confused i was like uh eh, i'm gonna just go for one hell played two got my pick i'm just keeping it real <laughs> 
uh, innovation and accessibility. Now, I read this. It says recognizing software or uh, sorry, <laughs> recognizing software and slash or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even widening a wider audience. Um, out of all of these, right? I'm gonna be honest with you. Out of all of these, Call of Duty Black Ops Six was my best pick. Because I mean, if I'm being honest with you, we can listen. We can talk crazy on Call of Duty all day long, bro. They drop a game every single year. Um, one thing I will say is, bro, when it comes to like you know the overall game in general, bro, the the campaign was really good. The multiplayer, I mean, in my opinion, the multiplayer is the, like the best thing about that game. Uh, everything from the movement, everything feels so slick, fast, but at the same time, it feels so like loosed. Like, bro, I, I in my opinion, I like it a lot. Uh, Diablo Four. Didn't really hit the nail for me. Um, the cutscenes were really good, whatever. But you know, gameplay wise, I was like, all right, cool. Like, it, it's it's a nice game, but it's not really, it's not fully my cup of tea. I'm just gonna keep it real. Like, I've been playing Call of Duty. I've been playing Call of Duty since I was young. Like, since I was really young. I'm gonna be honest with you. Even though the game was infamature, I was playing Call of Duty at around like eight, nine years old. So, so yeah. Um, we got Dragon Age: The Velgar. Dragon Age: The Velgar was pretty cool. Um, as a newcomer, it was pretty cool. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that play like the games, uh, like the previous Dragon Age games, they would have definitely voted that. Um, Prince of Persia, it was all right for me. And then Star Wars out, Star Wars Outlaws, that was um, it was a little underwhelming for me. I'll be honest with you, it, it was a little underwhelming. I, I was definitely expecting this like this full experience, especially like the, by the way they hyped it up. But I was like, you know what, man. I, it was a little underwhelming, man. And I'm not really a spo I'm not spoiled at all, man. I'll admit that. I'm not spoiled at all. Like, whenever it comes to, like, you know, games popping off and stuff like that, bro, I give every game a chance. I'm not one of those type of guys that, that just uh, take games in and just, like, throw it away because it didn't beat my standard or whatever. I, bro, I don't really have... My standards are not even that high. I'm just going to keep it real. I'm, I'm not... Um, and so this is why Call of Duty Black Ops 6 definitely got it for me because um, my standards for Call of Duty... They weren't really to the ground, but at the same time, I was like, man, just give me a game that I could just have fun with, that I could just play over and over again, and they delivered. I'll admit that, man. They delivered. So, shout out to Treyarch for doing that. Um, so, yeah. We got best performance, man. Um, wait, did I miss one or no? Oh, no. I, I'm good. Best performance. We got uh, Brianna White, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We got Hannah Tell, Life of Strange, Double Exposure. We got um, Humberly. Wow, that's a nice name. Humberly Gonzalez in Star Wars Outlaws. Was she the main character or no? We got Luke Roberts. Uh, he actually played um, uh, James uh, in Silent Hill 2. And then we got Melina Jurgens as Sunua Saga Hellblade 2. I voted for Luke Roberts, man. I think he did a really good job. Um, obviously, if you guys don't know, in the original Silent Hill 2 game, Obviously, the game, bro, that the game is like what? I, th I think the game's like what, 20 something years apart? Um, uh, so obviously, they had like a different, like, you know, voice actor, or whatever, man. I think he did a really good job with that. Um, and if I'm be honest with you, if I had like a second, like, option or like a second, um, like if Luke Roberts were there and it was just like these four girls, I would most likely vote for uh, Melina Jurgens, if I'm being honest with you. But other than that, let's keep going. Best audio design. Uh, we got Astro Bot, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Sunua Saga, Hellblade 2, and Silent Hill 2, bro. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. The audio in Silent Hill 2, bro, it got me. I'm just keeping it real. The music in Astro Bot was pretty nice. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 uh, sound, bro, you got to, like, be, you got to have the right headphones, bro. If you don't have the right headphones and you're playing multiplayer, bro, the footsteps sound like it's, like, all around you. Even though, like, the person is, like, to your left, the footsteps sound like they're just, like, like, like you just got like many footsteps going around you. It's it's just crazy. So, uh, that like the audio is a little off. You definitely got to, like you know mix up your audio settings and stuff like that. So is that kind of my fault? Maybe, um, but I don't know, man. You know, I just went for Silent Hill too. I that was like my first just gut, uh, pick. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, the music's nice, but I, I want to go with best audio design. Um, Hellblade Two. It that was basically like a movie. I look at that game as like a like that game played out like a movie. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think visual wise it looks so good, bro. I, bro, this is definitely like the most like 
this game right here, if there was like a, a, a genre for vi best visual looking game, I would have voted for Hellblade 2, bro. That game looks so amazing. I'm going to be honest with you. Best score in music. A uh, Astro Bot, we got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, Metaphor, uh, Refantasio. Uh, okay, never played that game before. Silent Hill 2, and then Stellar Blade. Now, the reason I went for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, if you haven't heard their music, man, you are missing out. Now, I will say this. My second option would have been Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade's music is absolutely fire, bro. Just keeping it real with you. It's absolutely fire. Um, on to the next one. We got Best Art Dressing for Outstanding Creative Slash Technical Achievement and Artistic Design and Animation. Astrobot, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring DLC, Metaphor, Rafanti, Zio. We got Neva. I mean, I think this is obvious. I mean, it it would have been between these two for me, um, but uh, bro, I I think bro, game science, bro, they did their thing, bro. They did their thing, bro. Best narrative. Um, we got for outstanding uh, storytelling and narrative development in a game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm gonna be honest with you, if I was to change my vote, I would have went for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I was like, you know what? We got uh, uh, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Metaphor. We got uh, Hellblade 2. Silent Hill is, bro, Silent Hill is like story, bro, in my opinion. It's very dramatic. It's, it's very, like, cold and, like, it's very cold and, like, you know, it, it, it kind of, it's very cold, open-ended. And, like, it, it's weird. Like, it, it leaves you, like, thinking a little bit. Like, and, and, and like. For me, like, I think a good story is whenever it leaves you thinking. It leaves you coming up with different theories and stuff like that. That's, my, that's like, a good story for me. So, this is why I went for, like, Silent Hill 2. Um, I believe we, get, we got the last two votes, man. Best Game Direction. Astrobot, uh, Ballad Troll, Black Myth, Wukong, Elder Ring, DLC, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and we got Metaphor. Out of all these games, man, I think the best game direction. Now, listen, I think the best game direction, the Elder Ring DLC, bro. I think the story was like, obviously, like the gameplay was really nice and stuff like that, bro. But the story, like the actual direction of like, of like the DLC, in my opinion, bro, I thought it was pretty fire. I, to the point to where I thought it was a little better than, I, I think the direction of the DLC, of Elder Ring's DLC, was better than Black Myth Wukong. And Black Myth Wukong was my second choice. I, I don't know. It may be... Because if you think about it, right? It may be I'm wrong, but I think I'm right a little bit. I think Black Myth Wukong and Elden Ring DLC, their stories are like... They're not that far apart. I'm going to be honest with you. They're, they're technically not that far apart if you really think about it. I wanted to go with Black Myth Wukong, but I was like, you know what? If I had to, right, I got to go with Elden Ring DLC. I got to do it. I, I just like their game direction more. Um, the bosses were absolutely rebunculous. They, bro, the bosses were rebunculous. I had to go for it. So Elden Ring DLC gets my pick. And the final category, the final pick, we have Game of the Year. We're going to talk about my pick after I read off the nominations. And my game of the year is, if you guys can tell, is Black Myth Wukong. I think Black Myth Wukong will get game of the year. Now, let's talk about the nominees. Here's what I think about this, right? And maybe you guys can, like, disagree, whatever. We have Astrobot, which I 1,000% believe this should be one of the nominees. Bellatro. Black Myth uh, Kong, obviously. Elden Ring DLC, obviously. Final Fantasy VII, Rebirth, honestly. And we have Metaphor. Here's what I believed. I, before, um... I think I, I think whenever you have like iPhone and you have like notes, 
I think you get to show them like what time. Okay. I have right. So I have right here in my notes. It says the Game Award nominations, eleven thirty-two a.m. Um, and this is before Jeff Keighley um, told us all the nominations. Uh, so obviously, I knew about the nominations and stuff like that. Um, and so he, I live on the East Coast, so he told us these nominations at around uh, uh, twelve o'clock noon. And so I was like, all right, cool. Here are my nominations. This is my nominations: Black Myth: Wukong, Elden Ring DLC. Astrobot, Stellar Blade, um, Silent Hill 2, and then I put uh, I put Warhammer. Those were my six. That would have been a stacked six. Um, I'm surprised Silent Hill 2 is not in here. I'm surprised Silent Hill 2 is not in here. Um, I'm surprised Stellar Blade is not in here. Um... If they would have just one, two, three, four, they could just keep this four and just put Stellar Blade and Silent Hill 2. That would have been nice. Um, I was surprised, though. I was. I was like, wow. Like, but here's the thing, though. It's very rare that we that we get to see a remake, you know, win Game of the Year. So I understand. But at the same time, bro, I don't know. Maybe... I just wish, like, like looking at my list, bro, like, I, don't, I think it would have been crazy, bro, if Silent Hill, bro, would have been in here. I'm just going to be honest with you, man. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about all my categories? Obviously, if you guys, you know, haven't seen it, bro, I voted for Black Myth of Kong, man. Um, I'm actually super excited about the Game Awards. Um, I'm more excited about, here's the thing, right? I'm excited for both, like, the like the world premieres, the trailers we're going to see for new games. Uh, I'm excited for, like, you know, to see who's going to win. So, of course, you guys know, like, I've been watching the Game Awards for about, like, I've been watching Game Awards for about, like, three years now. And, um, like, obviously, I knew about the Game Awards before, like, before them, but I never really paid attention to it, but... You know, now that I really got involved into gaming and stuff like that, man, first of all, I want to say thank you guys so much for all the support, man. Um, it really means a lot. Um, I definitely would not be here without you guys, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, all the support that has been going on um, of this year, man, it, it, it's, it's been crazy, man. A lot of ups and downs, um, you know, not only just like YouTube wise, but like, you know, life, you know, Um so I want to say thank you guys so much for, you know, all the support. You know, it, it really means a lot, man. Um, we we hit, we man, we hit highs that I, I couldn't even believe. Like, you know, and I'm not really much of a stat person, you know. Um, you know, I just record the videos, get them up, and then I just keep moving. You know, that's and that's kind of how, like, I stay consistent, you know, sane, um, you know, and, and just, like, I, I think that's the best way to go on about it. You know, you try your best, you know, try your best to entertain in the video. Um, I try my best to, you know, entertain the video, whatever, uh, get it up for you guys. And I just move on to the next one. You know, um, I, I don't, you know, refresh at the video for like 20 minutes to see if the views go up, whatever. Um, I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, that I don't, that I don't chase views or nothing like that. No, I'm a YouTuber. You know, we all try to get, you know, get the best numbers or whatever. Um, but at the same time though, like as content creators, you know, we, we kind of got to just keep going no matter what, we, you know what, one video, we might not get the results that we expect. And then this video, we might get it. And then that video, we might not do it. This video, we get it, you know, so many views on this video that we might not even, we, we're not even expecting us to get views in this video, but it happened. Um, and so as a content creator, bro, it, it's just, just it, like over these past, just like, two three years of me just doing this type this style of content man i never thought i'll ever you know enjoy enjoy this you know um and not in a bad way but like you know just trying i tried so many things on youtube man and the fact that i was able to you know to stick on this man i'm really glad that you know that somehow some way man i'm a part of the um gaming space on youtube you know um it means a lot you know that you guys come through you know watch the videos you guys comment man i see all the comments man i like all the comments um and i just you know keep going man so on to 2025 man we'll see how everything works out but i'm definitely excited for 
the Game Awards. Remember, the Game Awards is December twelfth, twenty twenty four. Uh, I believe you're on a if you're on the East Coast, it's what seven thirty. If you're on the West Coast, four thirty. If you're in like if you're in like the UK area, I know I got like some some UK viewers. Uh, if you're in the UK, I believe it's twelve thirty for you guys over there as well. So um, we'll see how everything is, man. Other than that, man. Oh, and by the way, I think there's there's actually more categories. I think um, there's a category to the where to the point to where um, it's like 100% like like it's 100% like uh like the audience vote that matters in like in like uh some categories whatever. I think it's one December second, fifth, and like the seventh. I think I don't know. It, it's so it, it's some like extra whatever. But other than that, man, comment down below, man. What do y'all think about my votes, man? Uh, don't be afraid to critique, you know, give your own opinion, whatever. And, um, you know, tell me about some of you guys' votes. Who did you guys vote for for Game of the Year? Um, and, uh, yeah, man, this is definitely a very long video. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I will see you guys in the next time out. And...